So I wanted to do a quick video overview of the different charging options on the Bolt EUV that are available. I wanted to show you just the time differential uh, for different charge levels because I did drive this car quite a bit today, over 160 miles, and I have about 40 miles of range left. According to the app, it's about 19%, which works out to about 52 to 53 kilowatts that need to be added back to um, get to 100%. I have here the dual charger that did come with the car. It is currently plugged into 110. The 1450 220 adapter that will plug into this side of the charging box is here, which we will try in a moment. Uh, but I did want to show you this as we plug in because as we plug in the car will estimate how long it takes to charge and I currently have the charge on 110 set to 12 amps which is the faster of the 110 speeds and the car did just plug in and it started charging and it's estimating its time right now which appears to be about 6.30 on Thursday. It is currently uh, 10.05 p.m. on Tuesday. So you're talking 44 hours to fully charge the car on 110, which is quite a bit. So I'm going to unplug this now and then show you what it's like on a 16 amp charger on 220. I have overhead a Clipper Creek 16 amp I had from my Chevy Volt, uh, which will provide quite a bit faster speed, but still not the full speed of the 32 amps that we can get out of the GM supplied one. So we had 6.30 on Thursday was our initial time. Now we're gonna switch it over to the 16 amp at 220. And we can see it is plugged in overhead and on. And it is re-estimating. And it looks like it would be about 2.15 on Wednesday, which is, you know, <laughs> 20 or 20 something plus hours quicker than the level one at 12 amps. So now, I'm gonna pause the video for a moment and I'm gonna plug in, I have a Siemens 30 amp charger here. I'm gonna plug that in and we're gonna see what kind of time estimates we have. After that, I will try the 32 amps that is on the, that came with the GM one. And then I'm gonna come back to my juice box, which is good for 40 amps. Uh, the Bolt EUV will take up to a 48 amp charger, so we still won't be maxing it out with this 40 amp charger, but I do want you to see the differential. Okay, I have now plugged in the Siemens 30 amp charger. I'm gonna walk over and plug it into the car and see what kind of time estimates we hit now get with the 30 amp charger. So the car is has once again recalculated. It's now saying six, still calculating about 6:45 or oh, 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, uh, which again is still quite a bit better uh, than you know late Thursday on 110. So I'm now going to pause the video. I will be unplugging the Siemens charger and I'll be plugging in the GM one which will be able to give us 32 amps reportedly. Okay, the GM charger is now plugged into the uh, 50 amp outlet I have over here. Uh, it should be able to provide us with 32 amps which is two more than the Siemens. I'm going to go plug it in and see what the car will estimate. Uh, it was estimating 7 a.m. on Wednesday, tomorrow morning, at 30 amps. So let's see what it's saying at 32 amps. So 
So not much quicker, about a half an hour quicker, which makes sense. It's only two amps more, but a slight improvement. Let's see if I can zoom in there. Yeah, 630 Wednesday. So I'm going to pause it again. I'm going to unplug the GM one and then I'm going to plug in my juice box and show you what that does. Okay, I'm back. The juice box 40 amp is plugged in at this point. I'm going to walk over to the car and plug it in just to show you. And we'll see what kind of estimates we get with this one. I believe we had 6.30 in the morning with the 32 amp GM charger. Now we're gonna go with the 40 amp juice box. It appears it's still estimating. It appears it's gonna be about 5 a.m. tomorrow which would bring me back to a complete 100% charge. I, uh, I typically, in my day-to-day -day use, charges back to about 80%, but 5 a.m. means that this car, that amp, that charger will in less than seven, in about six, six and a half hours, will replace over 50-something kilowatts of power into this battery pack um, versus the 44 hours that 110 would have taken so it's just something to consider depending on Your use if you are driving more than 40 miles a day You're definitely going to want to be on a 220 uh, it, it gets a little tough to to keep up otherwise because it will you will end up running a deficit every every uh, every day and unless you have public op, you know, opportunity to, to charge, you're going to be running short. Uh, in terms of these chargers, I will say the Clipper Creek that I have here has been in place since May of 2016. It has been absolutely trouble-free. I mounted it overhead purely uh, to get the cord to complete, keep it completely off the floor. We live in the Northeast, and I don't want to drag cords and the like through the salt. Um, this cord on this one is very flexible, even in this in the cool temperatures. I will say this juice box cord, it is thicker, much thicker actually. Um, does get somewhat stiff um, as it gets below freezing. Uh, where the Siemens is not as stiff. Uh, Comparatively, but again, it's a lower lower amperage charger This one I'm probably going to have mounted overhead in place of my 16 amp charger uh, Through the QMerit program. I am going to do a custom install because I clearly don't need more chargers out here uh, But I do plan to put a heat pump uh, on the other side of uh, this wall here in my garage to move the what is an air conditioner next to my living space over here and what Qmerit is going to do is they're going to take <clears throat> my small 30 amp sub panel that is in here currently running the 16 amp charger and this is going to get upgraded to a 125 amp charger or not charger panel box which will allow for a 50 amp circuit to be ran overhead where the Clipper Creek is currently um, to an outlet which will allow me to plug in any any uh, charger I wish to at that point uh, and this will allow me to run or have run a new 50 amp circuit from this panel box over to this side of the garage for a new heat pump versus a complete new home run from the main box which is about 75 feet away I uh, mean, you're probably asking why are you using this sub panel? Well, this sub panel is a hundred amp sub panel, and it currently has the juice box on it and a 50 amp double pole breaker. And there's a hot tub on the back of this garage, which is also on a uh, double pole 50. 
so adding another heavy load onto this box is not really possible hence the new panel but just something I wanted to share in considerations uh, the other consideration if you only have one charger um, most common places to mount them are where these ones are mounted is in the the left or right front of the garage whatever is more convenient obviously I have a lot of stuff on the right so it didn't go there other people will put it towards the front of the garage dead center on the back wall because then you can reach both cars uh, but it's all a matter of personal preference as I said I like the overhead mounts because it's kinda like a gas pump and it's right there where I need it and keeps everything neat and off the floor but those are those are what I have been able to accomplish what I'd like in terms of charging the 40 amp one I will tell you and the reason I mounted it uh, out towards the garage door side and which is nice is in the summertime this garage is generally full of stuff which means the cars are not parking in here uh, and it provides the opportunity to be able to charge in my driveway and the nice thing about the juice box is it does come with a 25 foot cord where it or 24 or 25 whereas the Siemens is only 20 and I will tell you those four feet are no noticeable uh, when you are um, trying to charge in your driveway but I think I've covered everything with the charging. If there's questions, leave comments. Uh, but that's what I got for now. Thanks.